Hello and welcome to the Wednesday News Show. We've got a packed, rammed, jam-filled sandwich of a show. <laughs> okay, so it is currently the Youth World Climbing Championships in Moscow at the moment. Uh, we're in the midst of it. We've had speed, we've had bouldering, we haven't had lead yet. Have you been watching? Uh, of course, obviously. Yeah. It's just on in the background of my computer. Nice. Constantly live streaming. Here's a little report of what's happened so far. So the World Youth Championships is broken up into three different age groups. Junior, 18 to 19 year olds, Youth A, 16 to 17 year olds, and Youth B, 14 to 15 year olds. Up until the filming of the show, we have seen the speed and bouldering rounds taking place. What has been notable has been the fact that not one nation has really dominated the medals table. In the speed, the Russians, as expected, have taken the most medals with two golds, but other than that, we have seen golds for Italy, Korea, and Poland. Most notably, the Americans seem to be working hard on their speed game with three medals for the males and one for the females. In the bouldering, there are a couple of names that you may recognize from senior level tournaments, but one who is better known because of his brother is Maichi Narazaki, who took gold in the junior male bouldering and is the brother of Tomoa. Along with another three Japanese male medalists, they are showing that the future is very bright for the Japanese male bouldering team. In the female youth bouldering, it was Italian Laura Rigora who took first place with a dominant performance, and in the youth B, it was Japanese Tani Natsuki who took the win for Japan. In her final outing at the World Youth Championships, Hannah Slaney saved her best for last as she won the female juniors with three tops and four zones. An amazing achievement and a very exciting prospect for the future of British competition climbing as she became the UK's first World Junior Champion. Okay, so an amazing achievement there from Hannah Slaney to win the World Junior, which is 18 to 19 year olds uh, World Championship. So um, yeah, we've seen her quite a bit on some senior level circuit events, but yeah, it's gonna be very exciting to see what she can do in the next couple of years on the senior level tournaments. So moving on to some outdoor climbing, Daniel Jung has repeated an incredibly hard crack climb called Recovery Drink in Norway. The line was first climbed by Nicholas Favres in 2013 and has yet to be graded. It's simply known as one of the hardest crack climbs in the world. Daniel was working the route with Tom Randall and Pete Whitaker. The trio broke multiple holds whilst working it due to the friable nature of the rock, which increased the challenge. Daniel placed all the gear on lead during his ascent. So yeah, Daniel's been hanging around with Pete and Tom uh, and there's loads of videos on their Instagram, mainly showing huge falls because there's yeah. this dead point. Have you seen like, the dead point yeah, move to yeah, the yeah. jam? Uh, and apparently when Daniel, he got through that dead point jam and then thought the next hole would be cool, but it would, had been broken and he hadn't tried it properly and he took this heartbreaking fall after the crux. So a bit of a battle that one, but uh, yeah, nice one, Daniel. Cool, up next, we have got a speed ascent of the Grand Jurass in Chamonix. Danny Arnold, who has previously made record speed ascents of the Eiger and the Matterhorn, has made an audacious solo ascent of the Grand Jurass in Chamonix in a time of just two hours and four minutes on the 28th of July, 2018. The face itself, first climbed in 1938, is 1200 meters and Danny had climbed it three times previously in practicing for his solo speed ascent. An amazing uh, ascent there from Danny. He has just been breaking records all over the place. And this one is particularly impressive considering how sketchy that face is. There's a, there's a great comment I saw on the Chamonix Facebook page. Some mm. guy was like, oh, look, it's in, let's go and do it. Do you have time? And the guy's like, well, it's only gonna take two hours. So, you know, easy. So <laughs> yeah, technically exactly. I could leave now, go up there, get it done and come back before the end of the day. I've never done that face. How, have you done it? Never been out there. No, it looks sketchy as anything. Some of the moves uh, in the video, and the video is on um, epictv.com, we've embedded it. So go and have a look. Some of the moves look pretty uh, ballsy. Uh, keeping with our mountaineering film a little bit, we have finally had an incredible first ascent of the north side of Lat Top 1 by a combined British and Slovenian team. The route was climbed by Tom Livingston, Alice Sezen and Lucas Drazar, who climbed it in seven days, base camp to base camp. The north side of the mountain has been attempted before. In fact, over 30 teams have failed on it since 1978. An amazing climb, especially considering the dramatic rescue of Alexander Gukov and the death of his partner, Sergei Glaznov, recently. So we've interviewed uh, Tom Livingston before, uh, and he's yeah. been putting up loads of uh, amazing big mountain ascents throughout the world. But what's crazy, and I read this on UKC, is that's his first Himalayan expedition ever. Wow. That's his first amazing. time out there and he does that face, so crazy. Um, yeah, that's incredible. It's a nice one, Tom. Okay, 90 counter. 
No sense. Is it because it's the summer? Might be. It's a bit sweaty in Europe at the moment, isn't it? Maybe colder temperatures come autumn. Sen season. When's that? Soon. That's complete disregard for the Navy counter. No Somebody's one's... going to be pissed off. You've had your coffee cup on it the other week. Is that my stain? Really on that? angered. Yeah, which really angered some people. You've got to like look after that thing. Do you remember when we were going to? I normally keep it, it in like a plastic folder. It doesn't need upgrading. I yeah. put it in a plastic folder, and you just chuck it to the keep, side. It's, it's and put on your, coffee your desk. Cup, use it's, it like a coffee. He's thing. lying to you. He's. I'll treat it respect. Mm. I treat Nambi counters with respect. <laughs> Matt, on the other hand, violates them. Uh, let's talk about videos uh, on the Epic TV website. Uh, and first of all, a trailer to what is going to be a just. No, oh, an amazing film, uh, which is the Alex Honnold free solo film, um, which we can't really show you guys because we don't own it. Um, what about a quick five second clip? Quick five second clip, okay. Go. Go. If you're pushing the edge, eventually you find the edge. So I spoke to somebody the other day who said that this they thought it was too dramatic. Uh, you disagree. I love the drama. Like, okay, number one, it is a ridiculously dramatic climb. It's outrageous, it's audacious. And I also think that every now and again, because climbers are always reserved, like no one likes to talk about it, just mm -hmm. big up climbing a bit. Just go for it, make it dramatic, make normal people understand how scary that is, and just go for it. I personally but do you not think the reason that people don't want it to be bigged up and like made to look scary is they don't want people it to like be like you shouldn't be doing that kind of thing? Yeah, but no one's gonna do that route. Is is no one's gonna no one's gonna walk up to the base of that route and just go just pop up there? Yeah, yeah, true. But like, is that not the reason why people don't want to big it up kind of thing? They'll be like. They don't want people to be like, oh, this is a crazy, you know, crazy, stupid sport kind of thing. I, I mean, maybe, but for me, it's a different issue. Like, I think, I think that it's dramatic like that, and it, and it's, it's it is dramatic for a climbing film. Like, mm -hmm. it's the music is crazy. It's got like a Hollywood style voiceover, um, and I like that side of it, regardless of the free solo bit. Like, I, I like the the crazy dramaticness. Personally, do you not? Do you? What's your feeling? No, no, I, I actually do. Quite, I do like it. I think it's uh, like I think a lot of people. You can watch like people go climbing, and you some people make it look very easy. For example, Alex Honnold. So you watch him just like cruising up some like I don't know seven A, seven B kind of thing, and it looks like he's just like walking up it. But actually, it is incredibly difficult. And if you actually know how hard it is to climb like a seven A, seven B. It's crazy difficult. It's impossible. It's hard. It's not impossible, obviously, but it's like really, really difficult. And so actually maybe it is good to, to show the general public that what he's doing is, is super crazy. Uh, but the full film of that is coming soon. Uh, National September, Geographic. I think, isn't it? Is it September? Yeah. Cool. Is it a cinematic release? Is it like... I, don't, I think they're, they're showing it in screenings, yeah, because they were talking about doing it up in Sham. And yeah, so I think it's going to be a big deal. So when that comes, awesome. we'll do a comprehensive review of the film. Uh, Lost in North America. So basically we've been re-releasing uh, uh, episodes of Lost in North America, which was an old series that the guys from Cold House Media did before. They are currently in Madagascar. Follow them on their Instagram and, and just actually just their Instagram for updates on what they're up to. But because the internet is so slow in Madagascar, we've been re-releasing Lost in North America. And here's a little clip from episode two. The Gunk Monkeys. Yes, love the music in that. It's like a little bit old school. Yeah, it's like kind of five years ago old school. 
back in the day. You remember when everybody used to be into dubstep? Oh mate, I was I, I was Mr. Dubstep. You were like cruising around in little yeah. Fiat Punto, yeah. lowered. I actually did grims. have a Fiat Punto. Wasn't of lowered. You did. Yeah. Uh, and final film. So uh, we went on a little trip with a group called Rock Stops, and they do. We, man. Well, me. It was Keep me. I went. Here. I went on a trick uh, trip with Rock Stops uh, to Fontainebleau, uh. and we made a little movie with them. And these guys bring people who don't know about Font or like don't want to handle logistics, and they take people there and show them around. And we wanted to, to create something a little bit different with this, because everyone knows Font's great for climbing, blah, blah, blah. But, it, like, Font's about your mates, it's about hanging out in the forest, it's about drinking wine, drinking coffee, and that's what this film is a bit about. So check out this teaser and watch the full movie. So the full movie can be is well is available on epictv.com and on our YouTube channel. It was Monday's show, so go on, have a look. And also, if you want to plan a holiday with rock stops, go and check out their website as well. Uh, finally, Epic TV shop deals. Mm -hmm. uh, the camping, the huge camping stuff we do because we launched it last week. Uh, we're now stocking camping stuff. Yep. Um, so we've done pick of the weeks and all that stuff, and there are great deals to be had. So check that out in the link below. And also, do you need two pairs of climbing shoes? Always. Always is the answer. And if you buy two pairs of climbing shoes, you now get 15% off. So you might as well just buy two because it's going to run out. You're going to get a hole in it at some point. So get two save later on shoes. It's like a good pair of uh, jeans. Like, if you find a pair that fits your weird legs properly, then just buy two. Oh. But in this case, I'm not talking about you, I'm just right. talking about people. Yeah. Generally, people mine have weird fine. legs. Mine, 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 uh, mine are normal. Yours are quite short. And, you know, you want to buy two, like, just buy two of the same pair. That's great. And then you've got, like, another, a pair, you got your sorted for the next year or so, whatever. Or however hard you climb, or however bad your footwork is. To wear jeans now or shoes? Yeah, exactly. Um, have a great week. Uh, see you later. Bye.